I avoid traveling on 66 whenever possible uh, because of the traffic and also how unpredictable it can be. Just to have a, a predictable travel time anywhere would be phenomenal. What our projects have brought to the region is uh, reliable transportation and alternative options for the drivers. The managed lane projects are intended to relieve congestion in populated urban environments on existing corridors, providing capacity that is managed through dynamic pricing to ensure a certain level of service at all times. Every morning, thousands of people go to work on DC, and what we've been seeing during the last five years and before we were here is that everybody is stuck in traffic for an hour. So being able to get to DC, driving at 65, 70 miles per hour uh, in your morning commute, I still don't know who is not going to take that deal, because it's going to be amazing for a lot of people. P3s bring additional funds, they accelerate delivery of projects that otherwise would take years to complete, and they also bring innovation and creativity to the transportation challenges uh, in, in urban areas. I think the biggest challenge here with I-66 was figuring out how to do it and keep traffic moving while we're doing it, right? It's, it's a 22 and a half mile, um, brownfield project where basically that was the, the key for our design build contractor was figuring out how to keep four lanes of traffic moving in each direction throughout construction. 200,000 vehicles per day running and that we have to maintain them flowing perfectly every day I think that's the main challenge. The design looked really hard at the sequencing of the work. They kind of first moved traffic toward the inside median area and you know, reduced the lane widths in order to do that. And then we're able to build the platform on the outside, which you know, also accommodated uh, a lot for the right-of-way acquisition and retaining wall construction, all that kind of stuff. That heavy work of, of widening the platform was all on the outside, the first phase of the construction work on the project. The latter phase, once that platform was widened, traffic was moved to the outside, and then construction of the inside was done. So the express lane stuff is on the inside of the platform, and that was the, the final work that was done. This project is, has been also recognized for being an innovative project, to mention the robotization of the concrete, it's very important because it's not a common practice in Virginia and it's an important reduction of the carbon footprint. It's about 400,000 tons of concrete that needs to be dismissed. What we're doing is we're using it. Basically, we're trying to make as much use as possible of the resources we commonly use in order to be as much efficient and cost-effective as possible. There's many benefits associated to the development of infrastructure, both during construction, with the involvement of different construction companies, suppliers, providers, and all the, the supply chain associated with that. Job creation that brings salaries to the region, additional sales tax, uh, whatnot. And then there's also a very important component in the operations with the benefits from congestion relief. Uh, additional mobility, improving uh, conditions for businesses, making the region more attractive for new companies. But there are also benefits in terms of reduced number of accidents, improved safety, etc. The number one mission for any roadway operations team is you want to protect the people that are on it and you want to protect those that have to respond to whatever situations out there. So the new technologies that we're looking to bring in here, beginning at the, uh, at the with the final opening, the, the last remaining segments of, of I-66, there'll be a new implementation uh, of CRIS, which is Connected Roadway Information System. This is laying the groundwork for communications from the smart roads infrastructure to vehicle. So we're using the, the standard technologies that are available right now, but we also have uh, the ability to use additional uh, streams, so going to directly to the car manufacturer. So we're able to provide faster messaging uh, information to the consumer, and at the same time, even our concession vehicles will have these units within there. So 
when a first responder is coming up to an incident, so to speak, or, or, or you have a person that's stranded on the side of the road because they ran out of gas, uh, we'll be able to notify that person that help is coming, stay in the vehicle, and also notify everybody else around that we have a first responder approaching. We're enhancing the safety of the roadway as well. And that's, that's an exciting new technology. It's gonna be one of the first in the country that's fully implemented, not just a test, but fully implemented. It's truly a multimodal project, you know, and that's, that's a, a great thing, I think, for the region. I think that in terms of being able to live in Northern Virginia and plan your trip and, and, and decide, okay, I've got to be to work today by this time for this important meeting, or I've got to be home for, for my son's soccer game this afternoon by this time. Before the express lanes, there was no guarantee. I mean, there were four lanes of traffic moving, but, you know, even a minor incident, any one of those four lanes would cause, you know, cause backup and, and, and congestion. And I think that now with the express lanes, there is the ability to have that reliable trip, that reliable commute. With the express lanes running, running, you know, exactly parallel to the free lanes, you know, you can sit over here and, you know, move along at 10 miles an hour or five miles an hour or what, you know, through the, the peak, you know, peak hours, or, or you can pay the toll and, and move on down the road. Users uh, have been able to familiarize themselves with the, with the new express lanes and all the different uh, options. We look forward to everybody benefiting from uh, the new project in, in a couple months. I think I-66 uh, checks all the boxes, right? It's, uh, it's a large, complex transportation project in an urban area that has uh, one of the best economic environments in the nation. So it has all the features that are attractive to Sintra and Ferrovia. We put all our, all our efforts into being successful and I think uh, we'll be able to deliver to that vision very shortly when the project is completed before the end of the year.